What's up? Day number one from the lodge in Austin is in the books. It's time for day number two. More action packed poker. Let's get it. I never so packed for the stack. Never lied on the back. Got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson. Do that I survived. Doing 80 to the house. Then I hit it to the sky. Change haters on a tire. Talking to the crib and the face be still. We start the day off with a little bit of lunch at a place Jess recommends. More great food. This man knows how to choose a restaurant. We return to the 1-3 table around noon and settle in for another day of Texas poker as the game opens. Yesterday, Jess had some poor results in the PLO bomb pots. And while we're talking over lunch, he said he's not playing any PLO today. The game starts with a PLO bomb pot. He thinks, all right, I don't want to be rude. So he throws in the $10. He then flops top set of aces on both boards. <laughs> Piles in the money and holds. I was still getting settled and I didn't have a chance to film it. But now my camera's rolling and oh look, that's right. It's my turn to pile in some chips and get paid. A player just lost his stack in PLO reloads and opens to $20 over a limper. I'm in the small blind for this one. I bump it up to $90 when it folds to me. Folds back to the opener who can just tell that I'm getting out of line here. So he makes the call to pick off my bluff. The flop is a harmless 3-3 deuce. Perfect flop to get even some of the weakest pocket pairs and overs to call at least one more street. I down bet to $75 to keep him interested with as much of his range as I can, and he makes the call. Turn is the eight of spades. This doesn't really change anything, or at least that's my thought. The bet on the flop sets us up to have a perfect one-to-one -one SPR with the villain's effective stack. Now it's time to put him to the test for the rest. I jam, he takes a look at his cards to confirm that they are a good bluff catcher, and then he makes the call. The river is the seven of diamonds. I table my aces, and he mucks eight nine of hearts. A confusing call from my opponent on pretty much every street. Hey, really quick pause in this video. Just want to remind you guys, if you're not uh, familiar, that we are doing a toy drive on here. We are going to be donating toys to Toys for Tots. And so uh, if you'd like to contribute and be a part of that, the information is down below here. All right, back to the action. A couple of orbits pass with our extra chips before finding Ace King offsuit. I'm in early position with $1,400 and raise it up to $25 pre. I get called by the button, who is the same player that we stacked with aces in the last hand. The flop is fine for our hand on six of diamonds, five of diamonds, jack of diamonds, since we hold the ace of diamonds. I bet $20 into 50. The opponent makes it 75. I hate my lead here. I do not think I should be betting this, even though I have the ace of diamonds. I really have so many cards to improve on. I don't know why I'm trying to bloat this pot. It doesn't really make sense. I, I think I should just allow myself to realize and check. Anyway, though I think this hand plays much better as a check call rather than leading like I did, I make the call since I hold two overs and a nut diamond draw. The turn doesn't hit us, though, on a two of clubs. I check. He jams. I'm out of options. I lay it down. I don't like how I played this one. Motto on this channel, never best, always learning. There you go. Learned from this one. For this third hand, Jess decides that he needs some tax write-offs for the upcoming tax season, and he puts a $20 donation on the table to his favorite YouTube channel. I'm holding Pocket Kings and suggest that he increase his charitable giving to $75. He throws in the additional funds, and we're headed to a flop to see how generous he's feeling. The flop is 943 Rainbow, not a board where he's going to have a ton of value. I bet $65, a little bit on the smaller side, to see if I can get a call from something like tens or jacks, possibly some broadways that have a backdoor flush draw. Jess places a quick call to his accountant, finds out that he has sufficient tax shelters for 2023, and folds without putting any more money into the pot. Next, we get involved with pocket sevens on the button, looking to set mine. I call the $15 raise preflop and connect on an interesting flop of queen six seven, all diamonds. The hijack bets 25, I'm gonna make the call. The small blind calls as well, and we see the turn three ways, which comes in the king of clubs. This time, small blind and hijack both check to me. I'm gonna bet $80 for protection from the hands containing a single diamond. I think the flushes would be betting here. The small blind makes the call, he does not check raise, so again, don't think we're behind. The river, a putrid nine of diamonds. In search of curse words here, the small blind takes the lead and jams the river. Such a shame. Goodbye, sweet set. Goodbye. I've never hit a royal flush before playing live cards, but with this start, we're already 40% of the way there. 
The hijack opens to $15. I make it $50, and he calls. The flop is 585 rainbow. It's unlikely that either of us have anything here, and it's difficult for me to have much more than just over pairs on this board. The hijack checks. I'm going to check as well. I think you can bet this, but I will prefer the check in this spot. The turn is another eight. This time, the hijack bets $35. This bet could be almost anything, given the board at this point. Our opponent can be betting here with all kinds of trash. I call to see the river, knowing that my ace high might be good. That river is... Another eight. Good news, everyone. We have a boat. My opponent bets $180. And we're calling to chop it up. Opponent shows seven, nine of clubs. So we were ahead. We would have won. But that darn eight. There is a saying in poker that if you can't take your wallet out of your pocket, pull out a $100 bill, and destroy it, that you probably shouldn't be a poker player. This hand is probably my favorite hand from the night. The button has been playing quite a few hands and opens his button to $20. I make it $80 and he's gonna make the call. The flop is jack of hearts, four of diamonds, six of hearts. This won't give either of us too many extremely strong hands and I will have all the strongest over pairs. I continue fairly large here for $125, knowing that I have the pre-flop advantage, and this flop doesn't really change that. I'm expecting this bet to finish the hand most of the time. My opponent thinks for a while, and then throws in the call. The turn is a three of clubs. I've been studying the power of a strong turn bet lately, and realize that based on my opponent's stack size, I can make life pretty miserable for him by betting large here like I would with my top pairs, over pairs, and sets. This is going to make things pretty uncomfortable for most of the hands that my opponent should hold, other than maybe ace-jack. I bet $350, and this time my opponent goes even deeper into the tank. After a long tank, he decides he's calling. I didn't expect the call to come in very often here, and now we're going to need some help. We're pretty much going to have to give up the majority of the time. The only cards we can really bet are queens, kings, and aces that don't complete the flush. The river bails us out queen of clubs the little voice in my head now announces yeah boy but i need to finish up this hand i jam the rest of my chips and now the button is visibly frustrated he's playing with his chips it's really close you can tell he decides to believe me and releases his hand shoot but hey happy to be taking this one down now we have black jacks no not 21 two jacks that are black. There are a bunch of limps in a straddle pot to the button who raises to $50. Folds to me, if he wants to continue, I'm going to charge him $200. I think it's way easier to play the jacks this way than going multi-way with a hand that is difficult to play even heads up. He agrees that $200 is a reasonable price, however, and makes the call. The flop? Pure gold shabalasmo! Queen jack three, we've got the over card on the board, and second set this feels fantastic there's a flush draw we have a chance to get paid i jam covering his last 300 dollars, and the opponent throws in the call the run out brings in backdoor diamonds the button mucks when we turn up the jacks seeing that the jacks are good well, it's getting late at this point. I'm exhausted, ready to call it a night, and so I cash out the chips for a win. I'm going to get into the bankroll on the next update episode. If you're not familiar, I take my poker earnings from the table, and I put those into the stock market. And so this channel is a combination of poker and investing. The next update video I give you, we'll talk about where we're at and what stocks I'm purchasing. All right, I will get into that next time. In case you missed day number one... Here's the link for that video. Go ahead and check that out. Thanks for being here. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you again soon.